Hi guys, it's a great time of year. It's beautiful weather and deer season is a couple Saturdays away. One of the things that has been coming up lately that I see online and, and I've had people call me and ask me, where did my buck go? I've had it on camera for a while and been watching it. I'm all set to kill this thing and all of a sudden it's gone. Um, my theory on that on the so-called buck shift or the deer shift or whatever they call it online is that yes you can probably count on bucks having buck bachelor groups and then breaking up after velvet shit okay so once they're hard antlered the bachelor groups are going to start breaking up as testosterone levels go up and then they're going to spread out a little bit but they're not going to go very far um, I spoke to Dwayne Diefenbach at Penn State University. What Dwayne does in his study is to collar older bucks, two and a half year old bucks, which in Pennsylvania, that's an old buck. And they follow him for three years. And what he told me was that in his study, very rarely does a buck totally shift his home range. This is a buck that actually did that. But it's only one of two bucks out of all the bucks that they've tagged and, and tracked that shifted their home range. Normally their home range as October 25th or so comes along and they start to expand it. Then November comes along and it looks like a popcorn machine. They're all over the place. So this particular buck had a home range as you can see. Uh, this is uh, one and a half miles. Okay. So it's one and a half miles by about a mile. He's going up and down this ridge. This is the ridge and valley region. So this is characterized by real steep ridges. They all have mountain laurel on the top and a creek in the bottom usually. So rough country, no ag anywhere. He sticks to that one and a half mile area. So he's probably covering six or seven hundred hundred acres here. <clears throat> then early October to mid October, this deer would go about two and a half miles over to this area. Now why he does that, I don't know, but what he did here was he went over there, came back for a couple days, and then went back and stayed there until winter time, which is really fascinating. Uh, one can only speculate why he decided to spend breeding season here. It could be that that's his natal range, and it could be that there's more does there. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. But this is all fairly homogeneous. So they're eating browse and acorns. So maybe acorns, but he did this each and every year. Uh, while they were tracking them for all three years. So that's that's really interesting. So it's possible that a buck that you've been seeing and you're excited to hunt them decides to completely move away. And he might be miles away. And I've heard the same thing uh, from Don Higgins uh, when he's looking for bucks and finds out that one of his bucks that he had on his property is now living two miles away during hunting season, but they always come back. Like this, this buck always comes back to this range once uh, winter starts, okay? So the other thing that coincides with winter, of course, is rifle season. So it might feel more secure in this range. Now there's another study I wanna show you that I also think is interesting um, that, uh, you guys should know about for archery season. Just hang on for a second. Okay, so this is a, a chart that Steve Shirk shared with everyone. Uh, if you don't know who Steve is, he's a guide up in the Northwest Pennsylvania wilderness. And what he does is he puts out a lot of cameras, like a hundred cameras on rope scrapes and checks for daylight movement, tries to narrow down where big bucks live. 
So he's got an interesting project, did a lot of work. And what he found was, as you can see in October, right around mid-October, these are all daylight photos. So daylight buck movement only. Uh, once you get to mid-October, you start getting more daylight pictures. And what's interesting about this is there's not a lot of them. Even in the rut, there's not a, a whole lot of pictures. Even when you get down in here, um, considering the amount of cameras he has out, that's not a very high number. It's no wonder you never see anything out in the big woods of Pennsylvania in the daytime. But anyway, there's a bump right here where there's quite a bit of buck movement in mid-October. And then right about, of course, as you know, that first week in November is key. So you can see where you need to be in the woods. And what's really interesting about October is that you need to watch out for cold weather. You get a really cold night and one of those frosty mornings where the leaves are crunchy and frosty. That's a good morning to be out in the woods. Probably not good to be in your stand up here because deer are probably all well fed at 2 a.m. already at their bedding sites and you're not going to see anything in the morning anyway. You're better off hitting the uh, trails toward food plots in the afternoon and the evening. So these are the days you should be out all day of course is that first week in November because you have a really good chance of a deer going by uh, during the day. But I like this period of time here. I've learned over the years that uh, this October 25th up until Halloween, that's a great time to catch a buck walking around looking for a hot doe. Where if, when you get into November, that first week in November can be great for catching a buck on his feet. But as soon as you, as, as he hooks up with a doe, uh, you're probably not going to see a whole lot of deer. So anyhow, Look for those cold fronts. It's not rocket science. Cold weather means you should be in the stand. It's when you have a, a drop of 20 degrees, you should be out there because that's gonna really stimulate him to walk. And then of course, November. So anyhow, getting back to the, uh, the, the, the buck shift, the, you know, there's, there's no real shift. It's just that individual personalities of bucks if they want to be somewhere else, they're going, you know. Most bucks are gonna stay within their home range and they're gonna expand that home range as the rut progresses and they may make four, four A's out of there, but they're always gonna come back. And the, the key is to have food cover sanctuary and plenty of does, okay? So the basics are all the same. Just keep in mind that if you create your good habitat, you're gonna have the bucks there. Even if they leave, they're gonna come back because your place is a great place to live. All right, catch you on the next video.